everybody. How you guys doing? Whoa, I like this lively bunch this morning. Every service has been like excitable, which I need, okay? So my name is Shayla. I am Pastor TJ's wife. For those of you that have never met me, I am the myth. When he talks about Shayla, I am who he's talking about. I'm usually over at our Pompano Beach campus, and I always ask myself, because I'm over here maybe once every three or four months, and so I'm like, I wonder if they all just wonder, like, who is Shayla? We've never seen her before. So just wanted to introduce myself, tell you guys who I am. Um, TJ and I will actually be married 18 years next month. <laughs> Crazy. I know, I know you're probably asking yourself, did they get married when they were like 12? <laughs> Absolutely, we sure did. But for those of you guys that haven't heard our story, we've been married, well, we'll be married for 18 years, and of 18 of those years, we have never had children. And some of you guys have heard that story, you'll, I'm sure, hear it again at some other point. But 18 years, no kids. Well, recently, we decided to become foster parents. And I'll explain that in another message, but... We decided to become foster parents, and about three weeks ago, we got a phone call on a Thursday evening to come pick, pick up a five-day-old baby named Alexander. And 18 years of having no kids. When people tell you, like, sleep now, I'm like, oh, they really, really mean that. Because I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm tired. So this morning, some of it, I'm like, it's fuzzy brain. I don't, I don't even know what's going to come out this morning. But anyways, he, he has been amazing. And he came into our home the week before Easter, which is like the Super Bowl of church. So that kind of like threw it off even more. But we are so grateful to have this little child in our life. And it's amazing that you can love somebody within like 10 minutes. You know, like you meet them and you're like, I, I love this person. And, like, I, I'm so blown away by what that feels like. And it's, it's amazing to have that experience and that feeling. I want to give you guys a quick update. You guys know that we're in the Immeasurably More Building Project. We're building a building in Parkland, Florida. And we have so many amazing things happening with that. And we have an offering coming up on April 29th. It's like our miracle offering. We have to raise about $250,000 in that offering to go towards moving forward on the building. And TJ has had a relationship with a business guy in our community who does not attend our church, um, just really loves what we're doing, loves TJ, and TJ's just consistently built a relationship with him. And a few weeks ago, he was hanging out with him, had lunch with him, brought him over, showed him the building. They were just dreaming and planning about like what this looks like and how we're gonna reach this community. And so last week, this businessman asked TJ to come by his office and so TJ went over to sit down with him, and as he sits down, the man says, hey, I love what you're doing. I believe in what you're doing. I want to be part of what you're doing. I want to help your church be part of what you're doing. And so he told TJ that he was going to match up to $100,000 of what you guys give in this next offering. See, what I, what I love about God is the Bible just doesn't say that he'll do immeasurably more. He actually does immeasurably more. And so this time, as we give and as we trust God and as we're obedient to what he's telling us to give, he is really doing immeasurably more. He's multiplying the gift that you give through somebody else. So I want to thank you guys for being generous and just investing in what God is doing in that community. Well, we've been up to our ears in like, building and plans and all these things. And, and that's new for TJ and I. We've never done this before. So we're like walking into a new season and it's crazy. And actually in this season, God has been teaching me a ton just through this process that we're walking through as a church. And so today I'm going to kind of call my message under construction. Because how many of your lives are, are under construction right now? Like it feels like the work never ends. There is always something to be done. There's always a challenge. But so many times in life, we talk about building things, right? We talk about we need to build trust in this relationship. We need to build our business. We need to build relationships. We need to build our confidence. We use the term build so many different times. But what I started asking myself 
is what do we really intentionally build in those areas of our life? Like while we use the terminology, do we really do it? Are we really intentional about what we're building? Because everybody says, I want to build great friendships, but rarely are we willing to be a good friend. So many times we say, I want to build a secure financial future, but rarely do we actually take the time and the discipline to build financial security in our life. We say, man, everyone wants a great church, but rarely will we get involved in what makes the church great. You know, we want to build all of these things in our life, but what are we actually intentionally building? Because this life takes a lot of work and a lot of construction and a lot of moving forward, and the Bible actually talks about the construction progress. And I think so many times we look at the Bible and we think, this thing is so irrelevant. When I sit down and read that, I don't understand it, I can't figure it out, and we just think it's irrelevant to our life. But what we're going to find out today as we read is that there is so much that applies to the process that God is taking us through in our life and what he is building in us. So if you'll open up to 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 14, we're going to read out of the message version this morning. And it says this, you are God's house. He's saying God has created you. He's designed you. He's specifically created you for a purpose. You are his. You are God's house. Using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed the blueprints. Apollos is putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there is only one foundation, the one already laid, Jesus Christ. See, they're already going through the building process here. Take particular care in picking out your building materials, and eventually there's going to be an inspection. Oh, dang. Every, nobody likes inspections. If you use cheap or inferior materials, you will be found out. The inspection will be thorough and rigorous. You will not get by with a thing. If your work passes inspection, fine. If it doesn't, your part of the building will be torn out and started over. But you won't be torn out. You'll survive, but just barely. You know, I think there's a lot of us in here that are living the just barely life. You know, that have walked through trials, that have walked through difficulties. And I think what this scripture is saying is pay attention to what you're building in life. Don't just kind of coast through life and allow anything to go. It's saying pay attention to the process that God is working in your life because there's intention that goes into something we build. If we're paying the money to have a house built, you better believe that we're going to use the right products. We're not going to be like, oh, yeah, use that little PVC. Go ahead, it's, it's cheaper so that I have to plunge my toilet every time I go to the bathroom. You don't use just any product when you're being intentionally building something. And so there are specific things you do through the process to get to the end result of what you want your life to look like. And the funny thing is, is we will take time to plan for a building. We'll take time to open up and to look at the plans of a piece of furniture needs to be put together. We'll take time to inspect all of those things. But in our life, we don't pay attention to what we're building. And it seems so crazy to me that we can do it in every single area of our our life externally, but when it comes to what's actually being produced in our life, we don't pay any attention to it. When we're building something, it starts with this this picture and this image and this vision of what you want for your life. When we were building the church building, there were so many different things that we were dreaming about and imagining what it was going to look like. And we had some pretty specific things that we wanted it to look like. And so Parkland wanted it to look a little different, but we just kept moving forward. So at the end result, there's, there's a vision of what you want it to look like. Right? There's a, a vision that God has for you. The Bible says that before you were even formed in your mother's womb, that he knew you. He's got this amazing picture for each and every one of our life, this full color, this amazing, something that, that looks like it could flourish and be incredible to be a part of. God has that for you. 
And we start with this amazing picture and this amazing plan that God has. But how many of you guys know, in order to get to this, you have to have a set of blueprints. And these blueprints, to me, they make no sense. Like, you look through this, and I'm like, what is all these numbers and angles? And But in order to get to this, you have to filter through this. And you have to follow this in order to get the plan. But so many of us are living our life trying to get this while throwing this out. See, in order to get to the things that God has for our life, we have to start with the blueprints. And the blueprints for our life is this right here. See, when we're building a building, if there's a plumbing plan that we need to go to, what do we do? We flip to the plumbing plan and we go, okay, What do I need to do in this part? Or the electrical plan, and we flip to the electrical part, and we go, okay, I need this material, and I need to do this, and I know the specific measurements, because I've studied it, and I looked at it so that I don't have an inferior product in the end. And the Bible does the same thing for our life. God has this amazing vision and plan for us, and every single thing that we face, maybe you're facing relational difficulties, Maybe your marriage is struggling and you're walking through something. The answer is in this book. If we will just open the blueprint that God has handed us, the answers are there. Maybe there's a financial issue. There is financial solutions in this book. If we will just open it up and look at the plan to get to the end result, which is the picture and the vision that God has for our life. But hey, if you're like me, you don't understand it. Okay, sometimes we pick up the Bible and you're like, no idea what that means. And we just struggle through it and and then we just get discouraged and we don't want to look at it anymore and then anything just goes in our life. But when we have blueprints, when we have the Bible and we don't understand something, you know what we can do? I can take this and I can put it before somebody that does. And I can invite somebody into my life to be able to speak into those areas and to be able to move forward and solve some of the issues that I'm facing in life. But we don't ever get to the end result and the vision and the picture that God has for our life if we don't ever open up the blueprints that God has to lead and to guide us. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you and not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. God is for you. He is for you. He wants amazing things in your life. And I think a lot of times we we look at this book and we think, man, if I start following that, my life is going to be boring. I'm going to be miserable. I don't like the Bible. I have to change. It's a bunch of rules. Same thing with blueprints. Man, if I've got to follow all of that, there's so much in there. There's so much in there. But the reality is, the plans are not meant to make us live a miserable life. The plans are there to protect us and make sure that we are building something that lasts. But yet, so many of us just lay these things down on the side and keep trying to build this picture that we have no idea how to build. And God is just waiting for us to come to him. So many, there's this common saying that says, you don't plan to fail, you fail to plan. And that is most of our life. We didn't plan to fail in our marriage. We didn't plan to fail in our finances. But what we did was we failed to have a plan to get us through it. You know, the plan takes some intentionality to get to the person in the place that God has called you to be, it takes intentionality. See, affairs don't happen intentionally. They happen when you've been, intention, when you've been intentional in building the relationship. They don't happen when you've been intentional in building your relationship with your spouse. See, debt doesn't happen intentionally. It happens when you haven't been intentional in building the budget and sticking to the budget. See, the stuff happens in life when we haven't been intentional about doing the right things. And knowing the plan helps us get somewhere intentionally. I read this 
Intentional living always has an idea. Unintentional living always has an excuse. Intentional living fixes the situation. Unintentional living fixes blame. Intentional living makes it happen. Unintentional living wonders what happened. Intentional living says, here's something I can do to make this better. Unintentional living says, why doesn't somebody else do something? We have to be intentional. The life that we want, the life that God has planned for us, doesn't just happen by accident. It takes intentionality. The second space on your notes there is foundation. Because once you have the plans, then you have to begin to to lay the proper foundation of your life. In 1 Corinthians 3.11, it says, Let the carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. And remember, there's only one foundation, the one that is already laid, and it's Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. Your faith, your relationship with God will sustain you through anything that life throws you. And if you are not solid in the foundation of Jesus Christ, when the storms come, when the challenges come, when the difficulties come, your life will crumble. And you will be left going, God, you hate me, what's wrong? Because we haven't had a proper view of who God is and the way that he's for us and the foundation of our life. Because if we are rooted and grounded in the foundation of Jesus Christ, it does not matter what happens in life. We can survive, and we will survive, and we will move forward. I found this on a builder's site as I was kind of doing some research, and it says this about the foundation. The strength of a building lies in its foundation. The main purpose of the foundation is to hold the structure above it and keep it upright. On the contrary, a poorly constructed foundation can be dangerous to the occupants in the neighborhood. See, when we aren't firm on the foundation of Jesus Christ, when we are firm on the foundation of our life, it affects not just us, but everybody around us. Then it goes on to say, what is the purpose of having a foundation? It says the basic part is to support the load of the entire building. See, the foundation is what you you build on. What happens after is what's built on that foundation. A good and strong foundation keeps the building standing while the forces of nature wreak havoc. Well-built foundations keep the occupants of the building safe during calamities such as earthquakes, floods, and strong winds. I've had a lot of those in my life. And when those things come, the most important thing that we can have in our life is a firm and a strong foundation so that our life keeps standing, so that we keep moving forward. You know, I think a lot of times we face these issues in life, whether it's relational, financial, kids, you know, any of those things that kind of life continues to hurl our way. And many times we try to address the symptoms of the problem instead of the source of the problem. We keep fixing the roof and it keeps failing us because we're only fixing the symptoms instead of repairing the foundation. You know, there was a time for, for TJ and I in our marriage where we were struggling. It, it wasn't good. And every single time I was around him or I was in his presence, it was like I was annoyed to no end. Can anybody relate? Nobody raise your hand, okay? <laughs> so I was just annoyed and frustrated. And if you know TJ, he doesn't know he does this, but he has this face that he looks at you with, and you just feel like, I'm stupid right now. And every time I would talk to him, I'm like, boy, you need to fix your face. Like, uh uh-uh. And so it was just compiling, 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 and it was like to this place where I was miserable. And it was challenging, and I remember sitting down and being like, God, can't you just fix him? Can't you just change him? Like, doesn't he realize what he's doing? And as I sat down, I, I started to think to myself, What's changed? What's different? And God began to show me that I had gotten further and further and further away from my relationship with God. I had allowed my quiet time to drift. I wasn't praying as much as I used to. I wasn't connected to the source of love, so I didn't know how to love. 
And I was trying to fix my husband, which I thought was the problem. But the problem was the foundation of my life. And as soon as I fixed the foundation, my marriage was fine. He didn't annoy me anymore. <laughs> well, sometimes he does, but <laughs> as much, exactly. But we have to begin to, to fix the foundation and try, not, not fix the, the symptom, but fix the problem. And we looked at this verse a little bit earlier, but I want to continue reading a few verses after it in Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. But it doesn't stop there. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. See, God's going, I got this amazing purpose. I want to prosper you. I want to do all these things. I got an awesome vision for your life, but I need you to come to me. I need you to spend time with me. I need you to seek me because I want to show you all of these things, but I need you to come back to the plan and the blueprint. See, once we understand that there's a plan and we need to focus on the foundation, then there's some actions that need to take place in our life. And the third blank there is building materials. In 1 Corinthians 3.12, it says, take particular care in picking out your building materials. See, how we live out this plan that God has for us is important. The decisions we make are the materials that build our life. The relationships that are in our life are the material that build our life. The materials in our life contribute to the end result of the building. How many of you guys know relationships matter? Who you surround yourself with either elevates you or brings you down. And relationships are part of the material in our life. And we need to begin to look at the relationships in our life. If you were building something, you wouldn't use an unlicensed contractor. But yet we will allow people that don't know anything about us or know the future or the purpose that God has for us to chatter, chatter, chatter in our ear, distracting us from the purpose that God has for us. We allow unlicensed people to contribute to our life, which begins to hold us back from the purpose and plan that God has for us. I remember there was one time TJ and I were building a house, and it was a brand new house, and we had a contractor that was doing it, and TJ was actually a trim carpenter at the time where he would put like crown molding and stuff in these huge, massive, like million dollar homes and he was really, really good at it. And I remember going into our house and it was just he and I and he was getting ready to put up the crown molding and he's getting up to staple it up there or whatever you do and I'm looking at him and I go, you're doing it wrong. And he's just kind of looking at me. Every man in here can relate, I'm sure, I'm sure. You're doing it wrong. Now, I've never put up a piece of crown molding in my life. He does it every single day. You're doing it wrong. And I just keep telling him, TJ, that's not, you're gonna mess, that's not how you do it. And finally, he looked at me and he goes, Shayla, if I did it how you told me I should do it, I would be putting it on upside down. But I learned a really valuable lesson is you have to be careful who you allow to speak into your life. Because there will be a lot of people who speak into your life that will flip your life upside down if you allow them to continue to speak into that place. You know, I think another thing that happens as we're beginning to, to build the building and use the materials is there comes a point where there has to be some protection as the walls go up and the roof goes on. Like there's debris that happens and all this stuff. Every time I go on the job site, Scott tells me, where's your hard hat? Every single time I go out there, I have to have a hard hat on. Why? Because it protects from things that could fall or hurt or harm and cause destruction in my life. And that's exactly what happens, that as, as you begin to build your life, as you begin to build the purpose that God has called you to, do you know what happens? The enemy hurls insults and lies and all of those things that he tries to penetrate your mind to tell you, you are not good enough. You cannot do this. Who do you think you are? You're not smart enough. Your marriage isn't going to be restored. Your kids aren't going to be successful. And he starts hurling all of this stuff at us, and we need to protect our mind 
from the lies that the enemy tries to speak as we are moving forward to the purpose that God has called us to. Amen. You know, I think the other thing that happens, I'm taking this thing off, <laughs> I'm sweating. The other thing that I know when you begin to use those building materials is you can't cut corners. You have to use the right materials in construction. It may cost you a little bit more in the end, but you have to use the right materials. And don't fall temptation to an inferior product because there are times when you will be tempted to use a different product than you should use. And there are times when you're going to be like, ah, he's a good guy. I can, you know what? I'll bring him to church. He'll get saved. It'll be great. Like, he's, he's, he's a good guy. No, he's an inferior product to what God wants for your life. Sometimes we go, oh, I need this TV. It's just a TV. It's just a TV. No, it's an inferior product to the freedom that God has for you financially. Sometimes it might be, you know what? Just one time. This just one time, you know what, I'm going to sit here in front of the computer, just, just, this, just this one time. No, it's an inferior product to what your wife is in the bedroom on the other side of the wall. See, the enemy wants us to use the inferior products that compromise the end result of God's plan for our life. See, the materials and the preparation determines the strength of the building when the storms come, and they will come. And it's easy to, to cheat. It's easy to say, oh, just this one time. But in the end, it brings destruction. 1 Corinthians 3, 13 through 14 says this. Eventually, there's going to be an inspection. If you use cheap or inferior materials, you will be found out. The inspection will be thorough and rigorous. You won't get by with a thing. If your work passes inspection, fine. If it doesn't, your part of the building will be torn out and started over. But you won't be torn out. You'll survive, but just barely. Here's something that I love about my God. Even when we don't do it right, even when we mess it up, he's there and he's going, we can start over. That room, that place, that challenge in your life that maybe you haven't done the right way, we can start it over. The fourth space on your notes is inspection. Because there is an inspection in life. When we're building something, we have to make sure that it's the right outcome and the right materials have been used. And there's this common saying that says, you inspect what you expect. You inspect what you expect. And here's what I know about God. God has this amazing expectation, this amazing vision and purpose for our life. And through him inspecting those places of our life gives him an opportunity to change and to move and to make right and all of those different things. So yes, there's an inspection, but we serve a God that goes, you know what? That place that's messed up, let's tear it out and let's start it again. And we don't have to fear the inspection. Because God has something amazing on the other side of it. He has healing, he has hope, he has forgiveness, he has life, he has restoration. And some of you feel like right now that life keeps getting torn out. That you have to keep starting over. Feels like areas in your life just keep crumbling and falling. But God says, I've made a way for that. We can have a fresh start. The verse doesn't say that you'll be destroyed or that you'll never be given another chance. It says, no, you'll survive. Don't quit. Don't give up because it feels like everything's falling apart. 
God's saying, fresh start today. Let's do it again. Let's start it over. Let's go back to get your foundation secure. Let me remind you to, to go back to the plan. To have the right people in your life. Let's rebuild it. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, maybe there's some of you out there that life's been feeling a lot like it's been torn apart. There's challenges and difficulties that you're facing and it just really feels overwhelming and today's the day where you're going, you know what, I, I need a fresh start. I need to start building again. I need to remove some of this old stuff and start fresh. If that's you today and you're saying, you know what, I want to I start fresh. I want to rebuild this foundation. Focus on the right things. I'd love to pray for you today. If you'll just slip up your hand. Yes, 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 all over the place. Yes, yes. Father God, we thank you that you are a God of second chances that you are a God that knows us so intricately, that you know our heart. And God, I pray that you see every single person in this place that just slipped up their hand and said, I need a fresh start. And God, I pray that you would begin to give them the courage and the strength to move forward and to do it right that you would surround them with the right people, that you would give them the ability to continue to move forward, to not grow weary, but to keep building. God, we thank you that you loved us enough that we could have forgiveness and that we could have freedom because of your sacrifice. God, we thank you for who you are. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.